Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We've traveled across the country to bring you a closer look at farms and ranches all over America. We'll share some of our day in the life stories next. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Each week, we have an opportunity to visit farms and ranches all across America. And this week, we're revisiting some of our favorite day in the life stories. Let's take a look. The job of serving as the volunteer leader of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association is a big one. The new NCBA president is Bob McCann of Victoria, Texas. Let's learn a little more about Bob and his family ranch in South Texas. It's just before dawn in South Texas and Bob McCann is saddling his horse in the early morning fog and preparing to move some cattle with his crew. Bob oversees the cattle and the hunting and wildlife operations for his family's company, McFadden Enterprises. My great-great-grandfather uh, uh, founded this ranch in 1877. Uh, he put the property together. And uh, so I am fifth generation uh, of our family to uh, manage the ranch. It's, it's a very unique operation here in that uh, we operate on uh, about three different counties. Uh, we have two ranches here in Victoria County that are what you would call the coastal plains and we have another ranch south of here that's a lease ranch that our family has leased since 1932. We're pretty far south down here as far as the United States goes so we've been able to make it work for a long time. McFadden Enterprises includes combined acreage that can support anywhere from three to five thousand head depending on rainfall and forage availability. The ranches are stocked with commercial crossbred cattle. My uh, grandfather uh, started uh, uh, our particular breed of the Brafer cattle, which is a three-quarter Hereford, quarter Brahmin, crossing Hereford bulls on Brahmin cows. So the three-quarter, one-quarter breed was what we, we found to be the, you know, kind of the, the best uh, cross for our part of the country here. And, and uh, as you can see, our cows uh, really look a lot like a Hereford animal. And, and have a lot of the boss taurus qualities about them. Bob studied range science, so properly managing brush and all of his ranch's resources has always been a priority and one of the main reasons McFadden Enterprises has been able to stay in business for so long. We've seen our cattle operation really grow and improve because of the improvements that we've invested in for the ranch. I want this place to be in as good a condition as I can leave it for the next generation, for my children, for my cousin's children, uh, our family's operation. And if it's in good condition, it's, uh, if it's a productive environment, uh, it's going to be a profitable environment. Beef industry advocacy is not new to the McCann family. They've been leaders in the Texas cattle industry for several generations, and Bob is a past president of the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. But the role of president of NCBA offers a different challenge as Bob gets a chance to represent cattlemen at the national level. My grandfather served as president of the uh, Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers, as did his uncle, my great uncle. And uh, my father was a director in that organization. And I served as president of that organization about 10 years ago. And uh, kind of during that time is when I got involved with National Cattlemen's. It's been really humbling to be able to uh, kind of follow up in, in my family's uh, footsteps in that regard. And, you know, we, I kind of grew up in that environment, going to a lot of the cattlemen's meetings. And so it was kind of a natural progression for me. And so I've, I've really enjoyed a lot of the advocacy work and working with the different committees and, and uh, just, just kind of having dialogue with different cattlemen around the country has is, 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 is really been enjoyable for me. It's a great honor for me and it's a great honor for my family and uh, to be involved with an organization like NCBA that has uh, just wonderful people involved. 
Bob and his wife Julie have two children, Robert and Mary, and that family support will be critical. As NCBA president, Bob expects to spend as many as 300 days on the road visiting with his fellow cattlemen and women. It's a big treat for me to go out to these state affiliates and uh, be able to visit with cattlemen in different parts of the country, kind of see how they, they run their operations. And uh, uh, I feel it's, it's given me a, a whole lot better uh, outlook on uh, what the needs are of our cattle industry going forward. I'm really uh, thankful that you know I have some family here that uh, will help out. Although my son is still in college, he's down a lot. My father is still around. He's 83 years old, but he still keeps a pretty good eagle eye on what's going on at the operation. And I've got some good help working for me. You know, with the communication uh, technology we have today and cell phones and computers and things, it's, uh, I think it's, it's certainly something we can strive to, to get done. Bob's knowledge of the cattle industry, both in the U.S. and internationally, will be a huge advantage as cattle producers look to open up more foreign markets for U.S. beef. We're enjoying some really good markets right now, and uh, we hope to see that continue. Uh, but, you know, a lot of what's driving uh, some of the good market we're having right now is our international market. And I think we've got great opportunities ahead of us with uh, opening uh, some new markets. We've got some really good markets open right now that are they're growing. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of consumers of our product that live uh, outside of this country. So uh, we need to continue to focus on that. I think that's a great opportunity for us. Bob is also passionate about helping young producers get started in the industry, and he knows the value of getting them involved in organizations like NCBA at an early age. Those people have a lot of energy. They got a lot of passion for this industry. They've got some great ideas. And uh, we need to make sure that we give them the opportunity uh, to be able to be part of everything we do, I think, at NCBA. And uh, they are the generation that are going to be able to relate uh, to a lot of our consumers, uh, possibly better than some of us older guys can. Plus, we need to have those people coming back into the, into the industry, into our business. And uh, whether it's our own children or someone else's children, uh, it's, it's important that we get young people coming back into the cattle industry. Bob feels good about NCBA's place in the beef industry. He's a believer in the value of cattlemen joining together and knows that NCBA can play an important role in unifying the industry. It's a great opportunity to be able to have dialogue with fellow cattlemen and uh, be able to formulate policies that uh, we as cattlemen can come together and agree upon uh, as the best pathway forward uh, for our industry. I've always felt that uh, cattle industry is always going to have a tremendous amount of challenges, has uh, forever and ever, uh, but there's always going to be a lot of opportunities there. And the opportunities will be different through the years, but uh, I see this in the next few years as us having a lot of opportunity. And if we can overcome our challenges, uh, I think we've got a great future ahead of us. You're watching NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman on RFD-TV. This is yours. And so is what grows there. Not theirs or theirs. Yours. You need this to fight this and this to grow more this. Because the more of this you feed them, the less this you spend on that. Which leaves more of this here. Don't let them take this from you. Chaparral takes care of weeds and brush, and that's that. The Case IH Spring Sales Event is on now, making it a great time to get the equipment you need for this season. With 0% financing for 60 months on all Farmall and Maxim Series tractors, as well as our complete line of hay tools, you can turn everyday chores into everyday savings. But hurry, the spring sales event ends June 30th, 2014. For more information, ask your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash special offers. Welcome back and thanks again for joining us. 
As California continues to deal with severe drought, the state's cattle producers have to come up with creative ways to continue to be profitable. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Russell Nemitz introduces us to one operation that adds value to their operation by combining wine with cattle. It's not every day you see cattle grazing and grapevines growing on the same operation, but Sonoma Mountain Herefords is unique. This registered seed stock operation is in a part of California that's more often recognized for outstanding wine. The Cundy Estate has long been home both to great vineyards and to Hereford cattle. Jim and Marsha Mickelson credit their kids with helping to keep the family in the cattle business. Sonoma Mountain Herefords came uh, about, about 15 years ago when we purchased my wife's family's uh, uh, Hereford cattle and our children were showing cattle in 4-H uh, when they were about eight and nine years old. And through purchasing my wife's family's cattle, we've grown the operation into about 175 mother cows today. It is family operation. It's my husband and myself, and uh, we have two children and a daughter-in-law that are involved. So uh, very much uh, hands-on and uh, keeps us very busy. Today, in the midst of the severe California drought, Bobby Mickelson and his wife Heidi are keeping their herd in condition by feeding hay. Hereford was the breed of choice for Marsha's father, and that tradition continues today. History of Herefords in our operation go way back. My dad was uh, started a Hereford herd with an FFA project back in the, about the 1940s and uh, started developing his herd and uh, had registered Herefords. And uh, then I got the bug. I like them because they're not only are they docile creatures compared to other um, uh, cattle species, I think they produce a very high quality product for the American consumer. The breed is, is a breed that you can, can uh, get out and be in and be around and not have to worry about uh, having problems with uh, cattle that have an attitude. And the Hereford breed is one that, that is real strong in uh, docility and, and uh, easy to be around. At Sonoma Mountain Herefords, the top priority is to raise high-quality bulls for commercial cattlemen. Marsha and Jim believe the mountain conditions where the animals are raised prepares them to perform for their customers. Our bulls are our mountain-raised bulls, part of Sonoma Mountain, <laughs> and uh, so they're not fed in a feedlot situation. So they have to travel to get their food and water, and we make sure that they get out and travel um, the way we set up where we water them and where we feed them. So they're moving, they're, um, they're very sound on their feet and legs, and I think that's an important part of where we sell our bulls because they're going to go out in the mountains to go breed the cows, and they've got to have good legs underneath them. We uh, really work hard on uh, quality of cattle, uh, feet and legs starting at the ground up, great udders, uh, moderate frame cows. Uh, the way we're going to make our living is selling uh, bulls to go out and breed in these commercial cow herds. And in order to do that, they've got to be able to perform for them. So we spend uh, a lot of time in selecting uh, sires. We AI here. Uh, so we spend a lot of time in looking at EPDs. Uh, looking at tenderness, a lot of the, the things that are available to us today, and really try and put together a good quality product that uh, will benefit us as a breeder, as well as the per people that uh, are buying uh, replacement stock from us. Stewardship of the land is another priority at Sonoma Mountain Herefords, and the Mickelson family's efforts have positively impacted both cattle and grape production. The winery operation farms about 750 acres of varietal wine grapes there in the Sonoma Valley and the entire ranch which is 1850 acres, our home ranch, is not all covered with vines so there is a large portion of it that is pasture land and grasslands and uh, woodlands and so we utilize the open, open space for the cattle. The cattle play a vital role in our sustainability. You know, we utilize the cattle for natural fertilization on the fallow grounds. Um, when we tear out a vineyard, the cattle will be put in there and they graze off uh, the, the fallow land. Um, and we also use cattle uh, waste in compost for our vineyards. So it kind of all is very, has a very symbiotic relationship between the vineyards and the cattle. The property, as she'd said, is sustainably farmed. And uh, part of that uh, farming practice is bringing the consumer right onto the property. And they get to see the cattle grazing in amongst the vineyards. And, and that exposure to the consumer, I think, has really done a lot to promote 
uh, the beef industry and to promote the marriage of cattle and wine that that people when they leave the winery really feel like I want to go get a good steak someplace and enjoy it with a good bottle of cab or or zin a, a good red wine grazing and grape growing have been intertwined at Sonoma Mountain Hereford since the 1950s and working together the Mickelson family has found the winning combination to produce great wine and great tasting beef as far as Sonoma Mountain Herefords go. I like to think that we produce a very honest product with a lot of integrity. I think it's a very high quality product that I think the consumer will always be happy with when they sit down um, at their meal and in the evening time with their family. Being in this cattle operation really came out of uh, something that we could do together as a family. And uh, we've really enjoyed it and, and uh, live it every day. It's been a lot of fun for us. Reporting from Sonoma, California, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We don't sit idle wondering how we're going to build a better truck. We get out there and walk a mile, thousands of miles, in the footsteps of the guys we build trucks for. The groundbreaking Ram Heavy Duty with 30,000 pounds of towing and 850 pound feet of torque. Five, 10, both here, 210, 11. I'm a 210, 11. Yes! <laughs> Joe! Todd! How'd you do? Oh! Not bad. See what you have to gain at thelongrangelook.com. Welcome back to Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Auctioner. Each year, the National Golden Spur Award recognizes outstanding contributions to the ranching and livestock industry. The 2013 winner is John Means, a former president of the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Scott Hoke brings us a closer look at this award-winning operation. Nestled in the mountains of far west Texas, the Means Ranch Company is a family-owned cow-calf operation that traces its roots back to 1884. John Means and his wife Jackie are the fifth generation to live and work in this part of the Lone Star State. Although the Means family used to raise Highland Herefords, Angus has been the ranch's breed of choice for 60 plus years. We've just uh, kind of tried to make a living for a long time ranching here in the desert and that's basically what we do i mean you don't see wind towers you don't see oil wells it's uh it's been a ranching operation the means family first ventured into west texas with a small herd of cattle in the early 1880s it took them two tries the first time john's great grandfather was greeted by a tribe of comanches who offered an interesting trade they would spare his life if he would hand over the cattle and he, you know, of course, gave him the cattle and they turned around and went home with nothing and, and started over, got a second herd and that time came with his uh, sister and uh, brother-in-law and their children and the two families made it all the way to the Davis Mountains. But uh, Gramp, as he was known, was supposed to have famously said, it's the easiest decision I've ever made in my life. <laughs> then my grandfather started here after my great-grandfather and he passed away in 61. Then my father was here basically running the operation. He passed away in 74, and then I have been here ever since, Jack and myself, for the majority of those years. With the constant threat of drought, John says ranching in West Texas is an art, not a science. Protecting what previous generations of means men and women put together has always been a priority, and John knows being a steward of the land is key to success. 
The cattle go hand in hand with everything you do. You know you're more prone to wildfire. Your grasslands aren't as healthy if they're not grazed and trampled. It's, it's all a process of nature. And when you take the cow out, you've taken everything out. And plus, I think more importantly, or as importantly, I don't think we can sustain these large acreages that we're fortunate still to have in West Texas if we don't have cattle. John told me when I, when I was engaged to him that he really felt that he was the steward of this land. He said, it's not mine, it's, I'm a steward. And, and I, the one thing I want to do is turn it over in better shape to my children than I received it. And what I'm really proud of John is that he's kind of like, you know, nothing I do is cast in stone. I'm all about innovation, so any ideas that you have, let's try them. And, uh, and it's been fun to see. Truly, if I believe anything, I believe we were put here to be stewards, period of the land, livestock, our families, everybody. You know, that, that's, that's my, probably my most uh, profound belief. John's passion for the beef industry is easy to see. In 2007, he was elected president of the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association, where he played a key role in protecting the interests of his fellow ranchers. He also serves on the board of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and is a member of many other organizations. It's been huge for me and for Jackie and for our family to be able to represent the industry and we don't take that lightly. I know Jackie and I don't and uh, I hope that we've been able to make a difference in a small way because it's truly been a passion for us to serve and. It's just been an extraordinary thing to be able to meet so many fine people. And there's not any finer people in the world than the cow people. And uh, to be associated with them and to be able to represent them has been a, a huge honor to me. For John, raising cattle is more than a business. It's a way of life. Not only does he want to be profitable, but together John and Jackie work hard to preserve the ranch for future generations, including their children, Lizzie, Coley, and Sarah. Jackie and I have been very fortunate to have raised three really fine children. Continuing with this heritage is, is something I definitely think about, but it's something I've not put pressure on my kids to do. You know, I want them to do that on their own accord. And I think we're blessed that they want to do so. They all love it. All the kids are involved. All are part owners and like to be involved. And uh, we've been blessed to be able to, to stay in business and to, to make it work financially well enough that we should be able to secure it to the next generation. And yes, it, it has taken a lot of careful management and stewardship of the grass and the cattle and the people and all things in order to make that happen. Absolutely faith in God has played a big part and we're very blessed to come from from a Christian family all the way through and I don't think you could you could stay here if you didn't have a deep faith. You know it's just uh, it can be harsh. <laughs> it can be brutal and not that anything else can't be but yeah our deep faith in God is, is a big part of our lives. John's faith and his passion for ranching are values he lives out every day. And thanks to his leadership, the Moon Ranch and the Means Ranch Company have not only survived for nearly 120 years, they have thrived. For those reasons and more, this West Texas cattleman is the perfect choice to be the winner of the 2013 Golden Spur Award. I know that he is very humbled and, and probably feels like he's not deserving, but I do think that it is a real honor for our whole family and for um, his, his forebears who really had a vision and have been able to, um, to, to see that vision to fruition. And John says all the time he's been privileged to be able to do what he loves, which is to, which is to ranch. And so I'm really thrilled for him. I guess there was never a time that I didn't know that's what I was going to do. And I've been blessed to have been able to do that. And it just, I love all, all of it. You know, I love the the cows, I love the land, I love the grass, I love trying to make improvements, I like projects, just anything you can do on a ranch. I mean, it's my life. I mean, I, mean, I love it. That's just, that's just me. <laughs>
It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattlemen is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattlemen. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. Its arrival is as routine as the truck that brings the next load of calves. You stand ready, waiting, watching for symptoms. A revolutionary new weapon in hand. Unique chemistry and hard-hitting active ingredient. Longer duration in the respiratory tract. Rapid absorption. Join the Zuprevolution. Zuprevo, Tilda Pearson. See your veterinarian. Welcome back. From the wetlands of Florida to the mountains of California, producers all across the nation have figured out how to raise their cattle in spite of challenging weather and terrain. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter spends a day in the life of one North Dakota rancher who is determined to raise quality cattle no matter what challenges he's faced with. We had what my friends coined an old McDonald farm, so we had every species of livestock you could think of. Doug Beekler is a third generation rancher and has had a passion for the beef industry his entire life. I was out helping with chores ever since I was a little kid. Uh, there's a, a picture of me probably when I was three or four underneath a dairy cow um, helping my dad milk cows. Today, Doug runs Beekler Simmentals and Red Angus in Linton, North Dakota, the same operation his grandfather started back in 1920. We have mainly Simmental cows because we like the combination of disposition, mothering ability, and uh, phenotype that we get out of the Simmentals. We started raising Simmentals when I was very young. Uh, we've had Simmental bulls as long as I can remember and I've always been drawn to the Semitals, and so that's what I continued on with when I graduated from college. We did add some Red Angus cows to our herd because some of our customers do like to use Red Angus on their heifers. Not only do they have the characteristics Doug is looking for, but he also believes Simmental cattle work well in the rugged terrain where his operation is located. Well, obviously with the uh, more aggressive terrain, we need to have cows that are sound. So soundness is, is uh, a key factor. We also need cattle that are, are hardy. The winters here can be pretty severe. Uh, so we need cattle that are, are gonna perform in the winter. Beekler Simmentals has an annual bull sale in February and a female sale in November. And the origin behind their fall sale might surprise you. We market females to both commercial and seed stock producers with the mentality that any of the females that we sell, we would have no problem putting back into our own cow herd. And the reason we do that is because we simply produce too many females to utilize in our own herd. So we started the sale with the mindset that we could basically produce these females for other uh, operators. Beekler Simmental strives to raise top quality cattle to ensure each and every customer is completely satisfied. And while they're continually growing their business, they place a high emphasis on quality versus quantity. We sell about 65 bulls, so we're probably one of the smaller sales up in, in this region, but we focus on quality cattle that have uh, performance, soundness, uh, great dispositions, and uh, a lot of natural thickness. Right now, we are at about 175 brood cows that, that we calve out each spring, and we've grown that pretty significantly the last few years. When I first started, I started with about 10 cows, and that was in the year 2000. So in about 13 years, we've grown the herd significantly. No matter how well their sale days might go or how much their business grows, Doug believes customer service is the number one key to success. We believe in, in good customer service. We stand behind what we sell. We have a philosophy that if we don't wanna keep it in our herd, we're not gonna sell it to somebody else. Being in the cattle business, sometimes things don't work out how you want. And so we stand behind our cattle if something should happen. I've even given my own herd sires to producers before just to make sure that their cows get bred. So we like to stand behind our cattle and, and we're pretty proud of what we produce. 
Reporting from Beekler Simmentals in Linton, North Dakota, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To join Doug Beekler and become a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or email us at c 2 c at beef.org. This business can take time away and become more of your family than your actual family. My days were tough. I had a lot of doctoring, a lot of pulling. Now our days on the feed yard are happy days. It's more about looking at the cattle and enjoying what we're producing versus the alternative, which is pull and treat and bang our head against the wall. We have never wavered from Draxon. We've seen the benefits just keep getting better and better. No storm is too powerful for new Purina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. Want to help elect officials who understand the needs of the cattle industry? Then visit BeefUSA.org and check out the NCBA Political Action Committee online auction page. There, NCBA members can view and bid on a wide variety of exciting travel and merchandise, and the funds go to support NCBA's work in Washington, D.C. You must be a member to contribute to NCBA PAC, so don't wait. Join today. Welcome back. Every day, cattle producers across the country work to improve their herds in order to ensure a more productive, profitable, and sustainable beef industry. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brad Bulla introduces us to one Kansas family that has invested decades in improving the genetics of their herd in an effort to provide consumers with high quality beef. Sand Hill Farms is a family-owned and operated Hereford seed stock business managed by Kevin and Vera Schultz. For almost 150 years, the Schultz family has been living on and working this land in South Central Kansas. We have a registered and commercial cow herd of approximately 350 cows. Uh, the crop side of the operation is irrigated and dry land corn, soybeans and wheat. We have been here since 1867. We actually have the original um, Homestead Act um, document here and so it's just really cool that we've been here so many years and I really hope that I'm able to keep that tradition going by coming back here also. The framework of today's cattle program was laid by Kevin's father Ron and grandfather Roy and Ron still plays an active role in the farm today. Kevin and Vera's children, Brooke, Tyler and Courtney are the sixth generation to work on the operation. Although Hertford cattle haven't been around from the beginning, the breed has established a permanent place at Sand Hill. Registered Hertford bulls were brought into the program in the mid-1940s, and the registered cow herd was added in the mid-1980s by Kevin and Vera. My grandpa started using uh, pulled Hertford bulls back in the 1940s. Through that, Dad and I have maintained that uh, tradition, but making sure that the tradition is, is quality cattle. And um, so we have, have had Hereford cattle on the place for 70 years, I guess. The reason our cattle, our family has maintained and stayed with Hereford cattle um, is because of the traits that we feel they bring to the table, so to speak. We've continued to use them and breed them and make them better because of some of the things like their feed efficiency and their docile attitudes and um, we just really enjoyed making them better and learning how to breed them. And they are really easy to work with. If you, the whole family's in a pan sort and cattle, you don't have to worry about somebody having to climb up the fence to get away from them. 
So that's one of the good things I'd like people to understand about the Hereford breed. We just like the Hereford white-faced cattle and, and they're uh, a breed that can be crossed with other cattle and, and help their cattle too, we feel. So uh, we're here to do what we can to make uh, our cattle better and to help people make their cattle better too. The Schultz family has worked diligently to improve their registered and commercial Hereford cow herds through sound genetics and solid management practices. Armed with today's technology, as well as the previous generation's wisdom, the registered program has continued to improve year after year, which means buyers come back to Sand Hill again and again. We've got customers that uh, range from coast to coast and from the north in Canada to the southern uh, states as well. And our goal is to provide uh, genetics that will improve every segment or offer improvement to the segment of the industry that our customers use their cattle for, whether it's the cow-calf commercial program, the stalker feeder operator, the feed yard man, the packer, or ultimately the consumer. And uh, we're trying to raise cattle, or need to raise cattle, that uh, provide profitability and um, help each segment satisfy what their goals are for their programs. Through hard work, Sandhill Farms has become one of the top Hereford breeders. That kind of success wouldn't be possible if not for the Schultz family's dedication to the health and welfare of the animals. If they're healthy, uh, they're going to grow better, and those all add to the profitability and the eating experience. We go out every morning, and it doesn't matter if it's below zero or if it's 110 degrees outside, we're either feeding the cattle or making sure they have water and everything like that. Sandhill Farms was founded on the principles of sound genetics and solid management practices. And that combination provides a great foundation for future generations to be involved in the business. We enjoy having three generations working together as a family. It is something we can all go out and do together and relate to each other, ask questions of each other and take, value each other's opinion and it is great to have all three generations working towards a similar goal. We love working with the cattle and yes we want to be profitable but we also really enjoy what we do. Some days it might be long, some days it might be cold, but it's just I love working with the cattle no matter how long the day is. At Sandhill Farms I guess our our goals are to continue to improve the cattle, to grow our operation, to provide the opportunity for the next generation to live here, raise their families, and be profitable with the cattle business. It's pretty neat that I'm able to work alongside my grandfather and my father, and then if the Lord willing, we'll continue to be profitable and be able to pass it on to generations to come. From Haviland, Kansas, I'm Brad Bola for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Do you want to join the Schultz family as members of NCBA? It's easy to do. Just call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit the website beefusa.org. What do beer, baseball, and beef all have in common? Besides being the ingredients for a great Saturday afternoon, those are just a few of the marketing angles implemented by one registered Angus operation. This unique Maryland operation focuses on raising top quality beef and is also skilled in successfully marketing their product right in their own backyard. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Russell Nebitz has the story. We feel like we're a, a family working together producing uh, high quality beef product even though we you know, aren't related genetically. When Dean Bryant joined the Rosetta Farm team nearly 20 years ago, he came with an eye for producing top quality beef. The quality is important because we want, want to produce the best eating experience that we can. Rosetta Farm is a registered Angus operation located in Moncton, Maryland. And while much of the United States is still recovering from drought, Rosetta Farm has received more than the normal amount of rain this year. But not even the weather deters them from producing a high quality product. 
and we feel like a high marbling product, which is what our definition of quality is, is important. And so we do everything we can from, from genetics through management to maximize the genetic ability to, to marble. You know, that involves uh, the right feeding programs. We like to have young calf-fed cattle as opposed to cattle that are, that are backgrounded and killed later. Uh, we feel like younger cattle will be more tender, which is the other component of, of quality. And then we use uh, high energy diets to, to finish the cattle on to help uh, develop that marbling as well. And despite the wet weather, there's a pretty big benefit to their northeastern location when it comes to their feeding programs. We have access to, to high quality byproducts. Uh, a lot of the food industry is located here with the Hershey chocolate plant, uh, the Kellogg's cereal processing, uh, various other industries. And we particularly tied in with, with Krogh's Brewery, getting their brewery byproducts on, a, on an almost a daily basis. Uh, we can get those products cheaper than we can buy hay. Uh, so we uh, feed a lot of those byproducts in the winter time to, to supplement our hay and uh, also in the summer for the pasture. But there's more to Rosetta Farm than meets the eye. In addition to their registered Angus operation, they also have their own branded beef program, which gives them a highly sought after local flair. A lot of people focus on local products now in our area and in a lot of areas of the country that with having Black Angus beef right there locally, it's a, a perk for our farm. We are in several restaurants and grocery stores, and we also do a lot of on-farm sales to our neighborhood. People can stop in anytime, Monday through Saturday, pretty much, and get beef right at the farm. We offer a high quality product that they can add to the store that's local, and right now in this area, local is a is a, is a big selling point and it makes them unique and works out uh, quite well for them to differentiate their stores using our product. Dean's wife Marcia helps market Rosetta beef and if you think people bypass the ground beef with so many New York strips, ribeyes and tenderloins for sale, think again. We have um, the Rosetta hamburgers which is uh, our number one seller and we call it our steak burger because with the ground beef we dry age the ground beef for 14 to 21 days. Most people think hamburger is hamburger, but as part of our quality, we dry age the whole carcass. So even our hamburgers taste like dry aged steak. And that's a product that probably differentiates us the most from other high quality products. And just on the other side of the freezer doors, their burgers even have a claim to baseball fame. Cal Ripken has been a lover of Rosetta beef for quite a while and he approached us about doing a product with us and, and selling it through our giant grocery stores. So we, we are doing the Rosetta steak burgers in a box um, that's called the Cal Ripken Burger and it's a very popular seller. Cal Ripken Jr. was a Baltimore Orioles player who made it to the Baseball Hall of Fame. He's known best for breaking Lou Gehrig's record for most consecutive games played and now he helps promote Rosetta Beef. Cal Ripken has been a longtime customer of Rosetta Beef and it was a, with him being a local sports celebrity, it was a good opportunity to, to partner and, and make something like that work. No matter what cut of beef you're looking for, Marsha and Dean are committed to making sure their customers are completely satisfied. We get a very good reaction from anyone that has tried our product and it's once they have eaten a Rosetta product, it's hard for them to turn back to go to any other product. When I say once you try it, you'll be hooked and they're definitely hooked. I want my customers to be very happy with what they're getting and we always say that we want you 100% satisfied. That's what our signature is, is a high quality product. Reporting from Rosetta Farm in Moncton, Maryland, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. From beef marketing to freedom to operate issues, why not join NCBA in pressing forward on key issues that impact cattlemen by becoming an NCBA member? Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit our website, that's beefusa.org. We'll be right back. This isn't a job, it's a calling. 
Your hard work helps feed the world. Being linked to those who care for the land is our calling. For more than 175 years, John Deere has been a proud partner of the cattle business. That's why we bring you special NCBA member discounts, so you can get the right equipment. Strong, rugged, versatile, and ready to work hard. Talk to your John Deere dealer to learn more about your NCBA member discounts. John Deere, committed to the land, committed to your success. Hello, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week, we travel the country to bring you the latest cattle industry news and information. Check us out at cattlemen2cattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. Glenn's worked his ranch since he was a boy. A lifetime invested raising cattle and crops and caring for the land and producing a product his urban neighbors can enjoy and trust. Well, why does he go that extra mile? So someday someone he loves can carry it on. IMI Global Third Party Verification can be your partner in helping you to market wisely and responsibly in this new world where people care where their food comes from. Real people. Let's face it. You don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand. But at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, long hauls, never-ending chores. The unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W. Trusted. There are some skilled people that I admire, good ropers and flat top guitar pickers, for instance, and I've always prided myself on my ability to build a good fence. But when I'm riding the fence line with a major domo wire wrangler and see him use fence and pliers with the dexterity of a surgeon, I realize my own shortcomings. And the same goes for farmers, pulling their implements over fields that sweep and curve and dip and climb through the coolies, the cricks, and the car bodies, and lay a line straight as a soldier's backbone. But I guess the one talent that eludes me most is my horseshoeing skills. I'm like a lot of cowboys who never took a shoeing lesson. I learned by guessing by golly. And I actually enjoy shoeing my horses. I don't shoe other people's. Uh, most people can't afford to have them lame that long. But Sean's dad and grandpa were horseshoers, so he picked it up naturally. He said when he was 13, his dad told him to go out and shoe Skeeter. Well, to Sean's surprise, it turned out to be easy. And so he was lured into complacency. And by the time he was 16, he'd shod Skeeter many times. So when he set about trimming him on that fateful day, Sean was cool and collected. He pulled the old shoe off, picked up his nippers, and went to work. I can almost hear him humming a tune. <laughs> when he woke up, his shoeing chaps were wrapped around his neck. The shoeing box was broken and the footrest overturned, and he had a knot on his head the size of a lamb's kidney. Skeeter was watching this all warily with his halter shank dangling off his chin. Salvo, the barn cat, was sitting on the wall licking his paw. Sean sat up and looked around. As his vision improved, he noticed Skeeter's hind quarters. Two sets of claw marks coursed from his rump to the lift off like the ski trails down a mountainside. Sean studied Salvo, who continued licking his paw don't ask me, he mewed. I didn't see a thing. This is Baxter Black from out there. When it comes to your land, it pays to be smart. At New Holland, smart means giving you a wide range of options to fit your needs, like smooth cutting, plug-free conditioning, and versatility. Smart means putting more hay in the bale and leaving less in the field. 
It also means providing exceptional after-sales support and growing a legacy that goes far beyond equipment. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. Join America's cattle industry for the 2014 Summer Conference in Denver, Colorado. It's a great opportunity to meet your fellow cattlemen and women, plus spend time planning for the future of your operation in our great industry. Bring the whole family and join us in Denver for the 2014 Cattle Industry Summer Conference, July 30th through August 2nd. For details, call 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. Welcome back and thanks for joining us. It's time now for this week's legacy photos submitted by ranching families from around the country. Let's take a look. You can send us your pictures of your farm or ranch by visiting our website, cattlemanthecattleman.org. Include your ranch, your farm name, and your hometown, and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that's our time for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.